Cancer. Welcome to Pandora Astrology's monthly horoscope for December of 2021. We are the astrologers of Pandora Astrology. I'm Jamie Kale Miller. I'm in Berkeley, California. I'm Julia Mijas in San Francisco. Well, Cancer, this month's focus on your sixth house of work, health, and service means you can expect to be preoccupied with work and the systems that help it run smoothly. A mission orders reading is a great way to get current on your work and find out what's coming in the months and years ahead in your career arena, especially if you have to make any big choices coming soon. You can find a link for that in the YouTube description below. Well, I want to show you this square that's been going on between Saturn and Uranus, and it's been happening all year, but this month it finally comes to a close. Saturn's been traveling along through your eighth house, which is a house of sharing and intimacy, and Saturn brings heavy pressure, the feeling of responsibility and duty, and a test, like a final exam, wherever it goes. So Saturn is testing your intimate relationships and your capacity <coughs> your capacity <coughs> your capacity for trusting and making good choices about who to trust and how to trust them. So Saturn's been testing that stuff this year, and we'll probably go on doing it next year, too. And meanwhile, Uranus, traveling along through your 11th house, that's actually kind of cool, because Uranus rules the 11th house and loves to be in the 11th house. Uranus brings insights and the desire to experiment. Uranus brings you into social groups and tribes where you can experience a sense of belonging or perhaps a sense of being a misfit, and you can figure out who you are in the context of the group. So Uranus is on a seven-year journey to bring you into connection with the people and ideas that, um, that you can resonate with. So these two have been bouncing off each other all year. Saturn has been saying, knuckle down, uh, take your investments seriously, um, think hard about and test uh, those relationships where you have placed trust or others have placed trust in you. And Uranus, meanwhile, is saying, hey, get out and make some really big changes in your social groups. Maybe try out some new friends. Uh, so these two have kind of been buffeting you about like a ping pong ball. You can find out a lot more about this Saturn square Uranus in uh, the video that we made about it on our December 2021 news playlist on our YouTube channel, Pandora Astrology. But uh, for right now, I think Julia has some news for you about Mercury, Mars, and Venus. Julia, what is that stuff? Well, hey there, Cancer. I'll begin with Mercury. That's the planet that represents communication and mentation. Wherever we have Mercury is where we expend most of our mental energy that month. So for the first 13 days of the month, Mercury is going to be in your sixth house of work, health, and organization. It's a really, really good time to kind of get in there and organize any areas of your life that need to, whether that's a hard drive or your closet. Um, Mercury in the sixth house can also be a good time for planning and strategizing around health matters. And if you do anything Mercury related at your work, like buying and selling, writing, speaking, teaching, um, or even anything in transportation, um, then this can be a fruitful period for you. Then on December 13th, Mercury enters your seventh house of partnership. The seventh house represents your romantic relationship. It represents any one-to-one -one sort of dyad that you find yourself in, as well as it's the house of consultants. So when Mercury is in your seventh for the rest of the month, this is going to be a wonderful time to hire a consultant if you need a doctor, a lawyer, anyone that you can kind of bounce ideas off from. And, you know, this might be, if you're in a current uh, relationship, a time of increased communication with your partner as well. In fact, your best thinking this month might be when there's another person you can bounce ideas off of than just thinking about matters yourself. Then Mars, the planet of action and activity, begins the month in your fifth house. This is the house of children. It's the house of fun 
games and creativity too. So for the first 13 days of the month with Mars in this house, it can be a time where you'll feel, feel very driven to be creative, also very driven to pursue fun and games. Um, it can be a frustrating time if you have a lot of responsibilities holding you back because the fifth house is such a fun place. It can represent clubs, it can represent games, it can represent casinos. So you're going to be wanting to have a lot more fun than just kind of focusing on the more routine stuff. Now, if you do have any children, Mars is a bit of a conflict prone planet. So this can be a time of flare ups with them as well. Then on December 13th, Mars moves into your sixth house. Again, this is the house of work, house of health and the house of organization. So with Mars in the six, this can be a time of feeling very driven at work. You might do better, uh, might be better off if you do work on your own instead of in a team context. If there's any way to do independent work, this transit definitely favors that. And if you have any chronic conditions, let's say you get migraines, let's say you get UTIs or, you know, some stomach stuff. With Mars in the house of health, this can be a time that chronic stuff can kind of act up. But this is also a good time to be driven to kind of work on your chronic stuff too. And with Mercury in your seventh of consultants, you could might maybe hire a different doctor to help you out as well. Then Venus, the planet of art, beauty, and relationships, begins the month in your seventh house. Again, this is the house of partnership. So this can be a wonderful, harmonious time in your relationship. Um, you know, when Venus is in the seventh house, she brings pleasure to relationships, too. And it can be a lovely time for all the single people out there to get out there and meet somebody new. But on the 19th, Venus is going to go retrograde in this house. And the retrograde cycle is going to last for six weeks. It's going to go until January 29th. So it's, it's quite a long Long time. Um, so when Venus goes retrograde in your seventh on the 19th, this is going to be a time of relationship review. So if you are in a relationship, you might be sizing it up and thinking, does this partner really feel like my other half? Like, are we, are we harmonious together? Are we simpatico? Um, you know, is this the best person to complete myself? And if you're single, then these could be things you could just be very preoccupied with what you need in your next relationship. You know, maybe you're setting up little columns of what you're willing to tolerate and what you're not willing to tolerate anymore so that you can be prepared for the next person to come. And uh, when Venus goes retrograde for six weeks, this, this period for all of us, whether you're in a relationship or not, it tends to be a time where exes come out of the woodwork. So you might have somebody from your distant past just give you a call, or maybe you just randomly run into someone on the subway, um, but definitely be prepared for that. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> well, there are two moons that I want to tell you about. The first of these is an eclipse. And these moons have something in common. They both uh, play off of the Sagittarius Gemini axis, which means they have to do with communication. They have to do with logic versus beliefs, um, thinking big versus thinking detailed. And um, the first, uh, the first moon being in eclipse falls here in your sixth house in Sagittarius. And um, there's, there's a lot going on with this eclipse. It's a total eclipse. And, um, and it has a lot of other, you know, planetary influences wrapped up with it. We're calling it heel breaches by how you act on your beliefs. And the reason we call it that is that a solar eclipse will it eclipse, eclipses will always show you your shadow, the stuff that you don't want to look at, that you'd rather put behind you. And a solar eclipse in particular can show you your shadow by how you behave, uh, by, you know, stuff that other people can see you doing. And that can show you your shadow. So beware of that, especially in the arena of your workplace because of the way this eclipse falls in your sixth house. Uh, and most particularly, um, if there is some kind of a breach in your workplace or if you cause some kind of a breach around beliefs, worldviews, opinions, um, this is definitely a time to pay attention to your behavior and have your behavior show you in the best light possible. Now, the second moon is happening about two weeks later uh, on the 18th. And here we see that the moon is in your 12th house. The sun is in your sixth house. This one, thankfully, is not an eclipse. Eclipse season is over by this point of the month. And, um, but it is a full moon, and full moons do tend to be, you know, kind of full of emotion. 
And uh, this moon sitting in your 12th house suggests that you may want to pull away into solitude during this moon. You may feel that you just kind of want to go introverted uh, during this moon. This moon is a lot easier to handle because there's a lovely trine to Jupiter, uh, which you can see the moon trines Jupiter right there and Jupiter sextiles the sun. And uh, Jupiter brings this warmth, this tolerance, this open-mindedness, uh, causing us to label this moon, broaden minds, gain bigger hearts. There's a better chance of you having conversations with other people during this moon that will, that will explain to others what you really believe and enable them to listen to you and hear you and also enable you to listen to other people and hear them and sympathize with them in their beliefs. And, uh, and that can expand the minds and hearts of both people. That sort of thing is likely to go a lot better during this second moon than the first one. So save your conversations for that point of the month, I would say. Now, there's another thing I want to tell you about. It's really the last thing I want to tell you about, and that's the seasonal shift. The sun is leaving Sagittarius, your sixth house, and it's going to move up into Capricorn, your seventh house. And you might notice that earlier in this month, a lot of the emphasis was in your sixth house, that arena of work and health and service and organization and you know, you may have felt the pressure to hunker down and pay attention to details. And here at the end of the month, the focus comes instead to the arena of relationships and um, how you form them, how you maintain them, who you form them with. And um, so as the sun shifts into Capricorn and we have our uh, solstice, <clears throat> it's uh, it becomes a really good time during the season of Capricorn while sun is traveling through that sign uh, from the solstice for about 30 days uh, to, to shine the spotlight of your high quality attention on your relationships and uh, on your partners, whether that is uh, partners for business reasons or for personal reasons. Um, where It's said that where you put your attention, growth can happen. And, uh, and so some wonderful growth can happen in your relationships this month when you put your attention on them. Well, that's what we have for you today, Cancer. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, you can find this video along with your other horoscope, maybe your rising sign horoscope if Cancer is your sun sign. Uh, you can find that good stuff on our website, pandoraastrology.com in the horoscopes tab. Also check out the forecast tab to find the news of the month and uh, check the readings uh, tab for uh, if you want to get a reading from me or Julia. And uh, also check out the classes because we'd love to see you for that too. And until next time, we'll see you around the cosmos. Bye. Bye-bye.